Welcome everyone to this exercise in the workbook statistics, this time focusing on probability theory. Let's have a look at the exercise. Here we have a university at three campi where they offer bachelor and master programs. The shares of students that cancel their studies are summarized in the table below. And we have here the overview. We have bachelor's programs, master programs as the columns, and for the rows, the three different campi. One in Düsseldorf, one in Berlin, one in Hanover. Our tasks, or in relation to this, what we also know, assume that of the students, bachelor as well as master's, 32% study in Düsseldorf, 51% in Berlin, and the rest in Hanover. Well, I forgot this information. Now we can actually start with the exercises we have to work on here. First off, what is the average share of bachelor students that cancel their studies? Second, assuming you meet a bachelor student that canceled his studies, what is the probability that it is or that it was a student from Dusseldorf? And finally, what is the probability that a randomly selected master student studies in either Dusseldorf or Hanover? Well, let's work through the three parts step by step, starting with the first part on the average share of bachelor students who cancel their studies. What we actually want to have here is information cancels the bachelors. I'm going to shorten this here to probability of CB. And what we know is how many of the students in Düsseldorf cancel their bachelors, how many in Berlin, how many in Hanover. That's those conditional probabilities, conditional on the three different locations. What we also know is the locational shares. And if we look closely, well, we needed this information to actually get the share for Hanover. Those shares add up to 100%. Well, of course they do, because any, every student has to study in one of these three different locations. So if we have this, this young distribution, meaning every student studies in exactly one of these locations, that's what's more or less implicitly meant with this, and we have the probability we're looking for, but conditioned on this, this young this, uh, distribution, then we can use the so-called theorem on the total probability to get from the conditional probabilities to the total probability or the unconditional probability. What are we going to calculate in this case in particular? Well, we're simply going to multiply the conditional probability with the probability of the condition actually taking place. So we're going to multiply this one with the condition of studying in Düsseldorf. We're going to multiply this with the probability of studying in Berlin. That's actually what's written down here. We're going to add up those um, products step by step. If we just insert our numbers in this case, we get this. And as a final result, 0 0.1976, meaning that on average, across all three locations, 19.76% will catch, uh, cancel their bachelor studies. So if we look closely, those 19.76%, they're in between those numbers. That's because the total probability usually is something like a weighted average of the conditional probabilities. So the end result always has to be somewhere in between those numbers. Cannot be smaller than the smallest one, cannot be larger than the largest one. Needs to be somewhere in between those numbers. Well, that was already part one. So let's turn to the second part, to part B. Here in the second part, we are looking for the probability that someone studies or studied in Düsseldorf when he canceled his bachelor's. So the condition is canceled the bachelor, and we want to know what's the chance that this guy came from Düsseldorf. What we know, well, we know the probability that someone comes from Düsseldorf. 
We know from part A the probability that someone cancels his bachelor studies. And from the exercise text, we also know the exact counter conditional probability so that someone cancels the bachelor studies under the condition that he did study in Dusseldorf. Whenever we have something like this, where it's more or less the switching of condition and probability we're asking about, we can apply the so-called theorem of Bayes. For this, we would need as well the two probabilities for those two events. Well, we have them at this point and at that point. Of course, then, theorem of Bayes simply looks like this. We take, I would call this the counter conditional probability, multiply this with the probability of the condition or the conditional event, divide this by the probability of the condition which we are actually looking for. Well, once we did this, we decided that this is actually the fitting formula for it. We can insert our values and we get as a final result 0 0.2429. So in other words, the probability that someone who canceled their bachelor's comes from Dusseldorf is roughly 24%. Well, that was already the second part of this exercise. So there's only one part remaining. So let's turn to the third and final part. What we have here or what we are looking for here is that someone actually did study in Dusseldorf a master's or did study in Hamburg. Well, in this case, we also need one information which we are missing in the text. But I will get back to this in a moment. First off, we know that someone, or the probability that someone does his master's in Dusseldorf is 32% and that he does his master's in Hanover is 70%. We get this from the table, from the exercise. And whenever we have something like this, we want to have the probability of a union. This usually calls for the addition theorem. However, the additional theorem needs one more information. It also needs the probability that someone studies at both, so that both events take place. Well, in this case, it makes sense to assume that someone does not at the same time does a master's program in Dusseldorf and in Hanover, not usually at the same university. So we can rationally assume this probability is zero. Well, if this is the case, then we can use the addition theorem, which here is actually pretty straightforward. We simply have to add these two probabilities. Since no one falls into both groups, we have a zero here. So we simply have to add 32% and 17%, giving us a total result of 49% uh, of students who do their masters in Dusseldorf or in Hanover, well, or in both locations. Well, that's then everything there is to this exercise. So I hope you enjoyed it. I say goodbye and see you next time.